But see, God has final say. That's why we have to build our faith up. It's not just like, all right, God, I want this thing now. No, it's developing that rapport with him. It's developing that prayer life with him. It's like, Lord, every day you're worshiping. You know, you, you put your worship music on or however you do. Sing the scriptures to him. Worship. Meditate on the word. Speak the word out loud over yourself. Lord, I'm the head and not the tail. Lord, you said that you've given me wisdom. Lord, I have the spirit of revelation in us. I mean, I, I quote that from Ephesians all the time Ephesians 1 I read Psalm 91 all the scriptures I write them out I'm constantly I have 800 journals home because I write and I write that's how it works for me I'm not I don't like the computer as much I like to write but I get the word in me Amen. and that's the beauty of this thing he wants it for all of us now, it's not like, oh, well, just for leadership. Oh, well, just for people who are in, in, you know, serving the Lord for 28 years, you know. No. He's saying, bow your knee to me. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. That's the only thing that brings transformation, that brings change in people's lives. That's the only thing that when, when we were going to have birth, give, when I was going to give birth to my son, and you've heard this a thousand times, but it was... For nine months, I decreed the word. I never expected that they were going to tell me my son was dead. And that's, you know, you get a little aggravated over that stuff. And so, you know, you, you don't accept that as your answer when, when all that time you've been praying. And, and so the Lord, you know, broke through and, and my son was born totally healthy. So he wants us to intercede. Now you can go to the next slide. So we know that we're called to govern. We have the authority of Christ in us. Now when we intercede, one of the definitions for intercession is paga. And that word means to collide with, to encroach upon, to drive in, to strike again, to be violent against, to make attack, and to invade. There is absolutely nothing passive about prayer. Now, can you understand why the enemy would not want us praying? Because we are invading his territory. We're taking back what's rightfully ours. And we have a covenant with the Lord. And that covenant is for us to walk in those promises of the Lord. It's for financial restitution. It's for family restoration. It's for health. It's for deliverance. That's what, you know, when, when you get saved, that word salvation is soteria, and it means healing deliverance prosperity preservation safety it's not that you're going just going to heaven which is awesome but he's calling us to live uh, you know heaven here on earth that yes you have my head problems but god wants you to know that you're in the head and not the tail and that you can stand and believe god for for all that he has for us and it's not just for a certain group of people again if you're struggling with addictions you know a lot of this stuff you know you're struggling with with fear, uh, it's mindsets that we have to come out of agreement with. The Bible says, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. But if every time that's all you're thinking on and rehearsing day in and day out about, you know, how afraid you are, well, guess what? You're going to be afraid. Right. And it's going to take you facing that Amorite. It's going to take you facing that fear and say, no, I don't care if my knees are rocking. I am doing this thing because, Lord, your word says that, that, that I can decree that thing and it shall be established unto me, that I can decree that breakthrough to occur. Now, there, there's a timing in the Lord. And a lot of times it could be us that we have hindrances where we may have unforgiveness. That's the number one area that can really hinder you from having breakthrough in your life, in your prayer life. It could be that you have unforgiveness towards yourself. It could be that you have unforgiveness towards others. Check your heart out. It's not worth it. And it doesn't mean, and I shared this the other night, you don't roll over and play dead, but it means that you, you know that, say, Lord, I, it's not worth it. I don't want anything blocking my, my time with you. It's that, and then it, what does it happen? Then there's a cycle of doubt and unbelief. So I have areas of doubt in my heart or unbelief that will hit me so what do i do i get the word i'm not going to say yeah god i don't believe you anymore you know i mean my flesh would want me to do that but i know that 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 he's faithful i have most of us have lived <laughs> we weren't all raised up in church without god and it's way better to live with god right and so the enemy so he he knows that we're born again so what does he want to do he wants us then to pull back 
He wants us to be lukewarm and wishy-washy. He wants us to, you know, we are called to be militant people. And by that, I don't mean that we're going up to people and smacking them upside their head. I don't mean that. I mean just in, resolute in your spirit. I am not backing down, devil, and you are better back down because you're under my feet in our prayer time lord like a battering ram that woman um what's her name in luke i think it's 16 the the woman that kept going to the unjust judge and she kept going and one of the versions says that oh my god this woman is wearying me he said he was an unjust judge she's wearying me and i am like one of the versions said black and blue from her i'm not letting go well, guess what? We are not letting go because we are pressing through because God gives us a strategy, and he's saying, look, you keep hitting that thing like a battering ram, but you have to hear from the Lord. See, and there, there's a maturity that we get in prayer. So the more you're in his presence, then you're learning to discern his voice because sometimes we're, we're trying to get something out of our emotion, right? So that's where we have to learn to discern what is this God, and then that's where you get counsel, from people that you know that are mature in the Lord. Because a lot of times, you know, and I've said this before, I'll have people come and say, I heard from God. And basically, they're saying, I want your opinion. But they're really not. But they heard from God. They just want you to agree with them. That's wrong. It's like, Lord, let's pray together and see what the Spirit of the Lord says. We're not God. We all need to get on our faces and hear from him as well. So the Holy Spirit is saying to us, listen, when you're in intercession, there's a colliding, there's, a, there's an encroaching that's taking place. There's a strike against the plot and plan of the enemy. So prayer there, you know, moves mountains. Prayer unlocks the spiritual realm. I wrote prayer breaks barrenness. Prayer breaks limitation. Uh, resistance to satanic strategies. You know, there are times that you just know there's no rhyme or reason and all this calamity could be happening. All this stuff is hitting you from the left and right and back and, and it's coming against you. That's a spiritual attack. We have to understand that there, there are spirits that are specifically assigned against us. The Bible's real clear about that. This isn't, you know, hokey, hokey pokey stuff. But you know what aggravates me is that it's okay for the world to have Harry Potter stuff all over the place, which is full of satanic stuff and teaching people how to put curses, and they people let their kids read it. Um, and, and we can do, uh, you know, you have everything like with Disney, and, and so much of it is, is satanically laced, and, and the movies are showing... You know, little kids having homosexual relationships. But God forbid we mention what the Bible talks about the spirit realm. And we're crazy. And we're too fanatical. Well, that's why things have gone down the toilet. Because we're not dealing with what we need to be dealing with. And God has called us to recognize these things. When Paul and Silas were in Acts. And they were off to prayer, it says. They were going to prayer. That girl with divination kept saying to them, Oh, these are men of the Most High God. And, and you might say, well, she's saying all the right things. But she was coming from the wrong spirit. And it was a distraction. And Paul got mad at her and he rebuked that spirit of divination. That spirit hates prayer. So we're also dealing with a spirit realm that comes against us to pray. And it's called a spirit of divination. In other words, it's a python spirit. Because when you look that word up, it's pythos. And that spirit of divination tries to coil itself and take around you and take your breath away. Now, how many times have you tried to pray and you felt like there's just this resistance? I, you know, I don't want to pray. You know, this is just too much with this stuff. I'm telling you, there's a spiritual assignment against us. But Paul, and look what happened. Paul, you know, they, the, the town got mad, mad at him. And they, they beat them. I'm not saying we have to get beat. But, I mean, sometimes in our, in our emotions and what we're going through, we get that, that beating, that attack. But they got beat. But what did they do? They praised. They worshipped. I mean, how many of us, after we got beat and we're hung upside down, going to be praising and worshipping in prison? Well, they knew that there was a strategy that kicks the enemies behind. He hates worship. He hates prayer. He hates the word. These are the weapons that God has given us to overthrow the enemy. And so what did he do? They were worshiping, and they were praising the Lord. They